Let me. You took front row seats. Of course. Oh, no. I think we, uh, some of us need that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Radio right, you're either good or <laughs> yeah you gotta have juice yeah so this is the camera that's gonna have us live and then that'll be the camera we're recording to so let's do this yeah you don't need to this the site this the um, you don't need to run this the slideshow okay because i can then if we have a clicker i can just sort of scoot down well i need to run the slideshow because the slideshow will be showing up on their screen okay so and we have another clicker to yes i will get that going too you know what you can can't see there everything I do it that's for sure Is the sound good, Mitch? Try talking about how loud you will be talking. Well, I, am, am I trying to talk to everybody out there, or am I trying to talk to? You'll be talking to them. Okay. Yeah. Showing up on my feed, but not Yes. Can everybody hear me in the back there? Yep. You can? Okay, good. How's that? <laughs> Just Google yourself. There we go. The spinning wheel of death. <laughs> or blue. <laughs> then you have to go to the command prompt and then you better remember your IP config slash s slash. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, that's not the slides like I was hoping they would be, but ready, fire, aim, right? Ready, fire, aim, load. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
So who's smarter, you or him? He's older. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things we wanted to do tonight is, uh, you know, we've got some stuff to give away. Okay. And I wanted to play a game and have everybody guess his age. And then one of us closes. So am I disqualified? Because I know. Yes, you two are both disqualified for sure. I thought you guys were leaving town. No, not us. I had mixed up somebody else. They came back to see you. No, they came back to you. There's your clicker. They were going to last week. Tell me. Got working? Yep. Just did. Okay, I hope everything else is working. I hope that everything else is working. See? You ready, Mitchell? Mm -hmm. You got sound? Mm -hmm. Okay. I am more than thrilled to have my friend Jeff Thurston here with us tonight. Uh, Jeff, I don't even know how to introduce you other than what I've been telling people, which is that Jeff is the smartest person you've never met um, or never heard of, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, I, where do we even start with your background? Well, I can I can touch on it in, in, in the slides. You got a slide for that? I have a slide. All for right, that. I'll shut up and let you talk. Uh, for the people that are watching on the broadcast, um, we have no way of seeing your questions right now. So if you ask a question, just hang on. We'll try to get to it to the end. Um, but it's technology is technology. Technology is technology. So let me get started. Hello, my name is Jeff Thurston. Um, these are the companies that um, I own. Uh, well, I'm one of the owners. Uh, Master Supplements is what we started in 2002. We bought US Enzymes and Tomorrow's Nutrition Pro in 2019. There's our, our websites and our toll free number if you need them. Um, this is what I like to say I am uh, an owner of Master Supplements, but other than that, I am a member of the human race. Is it, is it not showing up? No. It, is it just behind? It says no input. No. No signal. We'll go back. I don't even know how to fix that. <laughs> okay, well then just have to look at, well, how, do we, how do you get to see what on the slides? We'll, we'll figure this out. If you can go off memory, we can just flip the thing around. If the, I the which slide no, I can't, I can't, then the camera is right, all messed up. All right, so let's start all over again. All right, so we'll just start from okay, here. I'll, 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 so I'm one of the owners of Master Supplements, so I, and other than that, I'm a member of the human race. I live on planet Earth, and I owe my health to Mother Nature. Uh, Mother Nature has been taking care of us for thousands and thousands of years. And since modern medicine started taking care of us, the number three cause of death is doctors. So we just have to remember you know, where we are and where we're going. There's a little term here I, I use. It's called obfuscate. When you look at the picture, of course, you can't see it from out there in the audience. It's tall grasses in front of a beach and a break front and a sunset and, and behind. And the question is, what do you look at? We all start to look at what's the closest thing and we stop looking at what's out in the distance, what's the horizon, which is a very, to me, is what we need to be looking at more and more because we start to throw things into the shadow. And this is how I start every single presentation that I do. These two images show the bacteria on a baby that is born. So a vaginal birth, 90% of the bacteria on their skin is lactobacillus. And a C-section birth is less than 5% as lactobacillus. And visually, when you, when you look at that slide, it's easy to see the difference between a C-section birth. And then we get into the, the concept of breastfeeding. In in breast milk, there's an ingredient called human milk oligosaccharide. It is absolutely indigestible by a human being, but it's in breast milk. And it's there to feed the bacteria that the baby just got from mom. So if you want to look at things in the non-human centric way, the bacteria in mom are feeding their offspring and mom is the vehicle. Bacteria are so, so important to our lives in every way that you can think of. Uh, yes, there are a few bad characters out there, but for the most part, bacteria are so critical to our survival. So a little bit about me. When I first got out of college, and I won't say the year, uh, if you can't see it, then it's not gonna help you get guess my age. Uh, but I started working in a bio lab, and I was working in one of those 
areas where everything had to come in through an autoclave or an ultraviolet chamber and go out through an incinerator or an autoclave. And I was working with um, pathogens like Q fever and Rocky Mountain spotted fever or tularemia. And we were sending all that stuff down to Fort Detrick. And then I ended up getting promoted to vaccine production. And that facility is now Sanofi Pasteur, the largest producer of um, flu vaccines in, in the world. And so I just, for morality reasons, I had to quit. I just couldn't see sending all that stuff that I was doing down to Fort Detrick, Maryland and being used for whatever nefarious means. But I was immunized against every one of those pathogens. And to this day, none of them are approved vaccines. So I'm wondering if I was just a guinea pig, you know, and getting just to, just test to see if something would go wrong. Anyway, I got out of that and I did a lot of different things. And um, a friend of mine decided I needed to be in sales. So I got into lawn and garden sales. And then I looked at lawn and garden sales and I said, my goodness, I'm selling chemicals. I'm just selling thousands and thousands of dollars worth of chemicals. So I stopped doing that and started getting more into organic agriculture. And if you can see the picture down in the bottom, that's me in the corner with one of my girls. My, I'm a beekeeper. Now, these are the books that influence me. Think and Grow Rich. Negative thoughts are free. They multiply like rabbits. Positive thoughts you have to work on every single day. The middle book, The Soil Food Web, that's Dr. Elaine Ingham from, I think it's Oregon, or maybe it's Oregon State. She wrote a book on what's going on below the ground. And the book uh, that, that changed my life more than anything else is The Silent Spring. How many of you have read The Silent Spring? I would suggest you read that book. This, this was, book was written in 1962, and it talks about the dangers of DDT which was caused us to lose the California condors and eagles and, and the, the red Fs that run around the ground where I am. DDT was destroying the environment. It took 10 years from the time this book came out until the government said it's no good. But if you take that book and turn it around right now and take out the words DDT and put in glyphosate, it's the exact same book. We're still doing the things that we should not be doing. And there's a half truth to glyphosate. They say that glyphosate only affects the shikamati pathway and the human beings do not have the shikamati pathway that's the half truth and it is true but it affects your microbiome and there are 100 trillion bugs in your microbiome versus the the few paltry cells that we have in our bodies glyphosate is roundup yeah oh right and that's really the biggest part of the problem with with gluten issues more than the gluten itself all right, these are the, this is a, a paper that shows the number of bacteria, actinomycetes, and fungi in one acre of grassland soil. There are over three tons of those organisms in grassland soil. And what we do now is we take a plow, we turn it over, and we kill all of those bacteria, fungi, and actinomycetes. <laughs> we put NPK on the soil to grow a tomato or a, a wheat or corn or whatever. And these organisms are destroyed. Curious thing here is a list of uh, actinomyces, streptomyces, different strains, and all the different antibiotics that come from these plants or these, these bacteria in the ground. They're not coming from the scientists in a white coat sitting in a laboratory. They're coming from Mother Nature. You know, tetracycline is on here. Um, uh, avermectin is on here. And avermectin is, there are several avermectins, and one of them is ivermectin, which is one of the things that they've talked a lot about as, as being able to help with uh, the current pandemic and if you take it early enough. Now, these, this, this gentleman holding this plant is holding it by the base of the plant and the roots go down seven feet, eight feet down. And on every one of those root hairs, there are bacteria, actinomyces, and fungi. And they are taking the nutrients in the soil and putting it into the plant. And if you see the little circle behind the guy's head, the roots from corn and wheat only go down about this far. So they can't possibly go down into the ground where the, the selenium is and, and, and all the different other micronutrients that might be needed for us to survive as human beings. So the, the, there's 900,000 acres of soil turned over in the United States every year to plant wheat and corn and uh, sorghum, whatever it is that they're planting, and they're destroying all those bacteria, fungi, and actinomycetes, which are giving us the nutrition in our food. Um, so what you're saying then is, 
it's not so much the, the nutrients in the soil, it's the bacteria and the fungi that absorb it and allow it to get into the plants. Is that, am I understanding You're that correctly? Correct. And the plant provides the, an exudate which feeds the bacteria. All right, so the plant is feeding the bacteria. The bacteria are taking the nutrients in the soil and giving it into the plant. Now, some selenium can go through a sulfur pathway and get into the plant, but 90% of it's gonna come in through organisms in the soil to get that into your tomato plant. So without the bacteria, you don't have the selenium, you don't have the selenium, your glutathione doesn't work. So there's, there's all of these things that are going on from beginning to end. And there's one little odd ingredient that most people don't have, it's not even in most of our tissues, it's called yttrium. It's number 39 on the periodic table. And it is absolutely necessary for some bifidobacteria to create the proper proteins to help your colon function properly. And you find that in cucumbers, you find it in wild cherries, you can get it in some watermelon, but it's, it's um, and, and when you take an amino acid and you put it next to DNA, the DNA will tell you what to put next to it to make a protein or a peptide. And to come to the end, so it's like a train. The, the, the primary methionine is maybe the engine, the DNA tells you how many cars to put in the train, and the caboose is the one that tells you when to stop, right? And there's three stop codons that are used in building proteins in the body, hydrogen, sulfur, and yttrium. So without yttrium, you don't have the ability to build a lot of different proteins in, in our bodies. And, without, and selenium is a backup to that, because Mother Nature always gives us a little bit of a backup. But yttrium is that important of a particular um, mineral that we get, and we don't get it in our, our soils anymore. This is a, a list of different, from mm, so middle 1975, if you will, up to about 2000, shows we've lost about 30% of calcium. And, and all these 27% of our iron and vitamin A is decreasing rapidly in the, the foods that we eat. So what your grandparents ate, my grandparents ate, had a lot of nutrition. The food now doesn't have much nutrition. They pick it too early before it even has a chance to ripen and pull everything up to the sugars that it needs to have. They get it up they, and they store it and then they ship it. And so we're just, and if you will, we did not have supermarkets until after World War II. So everybody had little stores and shops and farms that they went to to get their food. Now, some buyer in an office somewhere is telling, this is the only things that you can buy. They're telling you, this is the tomatoes we're gonna get, these are the cucumbers we're gonna get, this is the pork we're gonna get, this is the beef we're gonna get. You know, so we're limited in our choices now. So people have to learn to get back into growing some food themselves. And it's not all that difficult. So the one cow is out there eating grass, he's happy, That's, that cow is going to have nutrition. The cows on, on the right are feeding GMO corn just in a stanchion. So which meat do you think is gonna have more nutrition and be better for you to eat? Same thing with chickens. These chickens on the top that are out in the grass, they're eating insects, they're eating everything else, they're getting bacteria and the chickens in that other thing are eating GMO corn again. And you can see the difference in those two eggs. The orange egg is a healthy, vibrant egg that has a lot of nutrition and that yellow one is just sort of flat and doesn't have a lot of stuff going to it. Now, one of the things that we did in uh, our earlier life is my partner and I were both in organic agriculture. And I don't know how many of you know what, how bananas are grown, but bananas are a one-year crop. So they'll take out a hectare of rainforest and they'll plant bananas. They harvest the bananas, but they can't plant bananas in that ground again because of fusarium. So they'll take out another 10 hectares of rainforest to plant the same 10 acres or 10 hectares of bananas. So now you have 20 hectares producing 10 hectares. And the following year, it's 30 producing the same 10. And the next year, it's 40. So we've learned to go in and put bacteria in the soil which controls the fusarium so they can alternate the crop every other year they can go in and grow bananas. But that's by using bacteria to control a pest that's keeping the bananas from growing. Um, and this is where I talk about things that most people are not going to um, understand or believe or whatever. This is the tinfoil hat part of my, my existence. It's called electroculture. There is energy around us all the time. And if you just take a copper wire, wrap it around a dowel and stick it into the ground, you energize the soil, your plants will grow better. They won't need as much uh, fertilizer and they won't have as many pests. Just by simply taking the energy that's in the air all around us all the time. And it's called electroculture. And so people say, well, Jeff, you're wearing a tinfoil hat. And I say, 
better than your blinders. It matches mine. Yeah, I know. But it's, it's something interesting, and I'll just say a simple experiment. Take four or five pots of soil and plant the same bean seeds in the five different pots, and in the one on the left-hand side, put one of these antennas, and see which plants come up fastest and which ones grow the tallest. The, the ones with the antenna will be taller and faster. They'll come out of the ground, and the ones on the right will be shorter. That's a simple experiment you can do, and if it works, then start doing it in your garden with your fruit trees, with your vegetables, your house plants. It doesn't How did matter. you make that antenna? Hold Just on. take a piece of copper wire, and we're in the northern hemisphere, so wrap it clockwise around a dowel and stick it in the ground. That's Just it. A wooden dowel. Just a wooden dowel. But the copper has to make contact with the it soil. It has to go into the soil. Absolutely has to go into the soil because that's taking that at the energy that's around us and putting it back into the soil, which is now giving the plants extra energy to grow. Try it. Is it work for outdoor plants? Yes, yes, flowers? yes. It works for just about everything that grows. How is that affected by electrosmog? It's, it's going to, you know, electrosmog is electrosmog. It's around everywhere. So if you do, if you have a garden and you do it around your garden, you're going to protect your whole garden. I use it for my bees. I'll put it across the opening of my beehives, and when the bees come in and go out, it kills the, the varroa mites. So that the, it's good for my, my bees as well as for growing plants. But again, it's nature, it's, it's the energy that's around us all the time. So let's just get into some things that are okay. What is physical health? We are a collection of cells that become tissues, that become organs, and then systems, and then we have the organism. The problem is, this is how we treat. We treat from the organism down to the cell. Now, Here's a little, a little story. If you are in the kitchen cooking, and I'm looking at the age of everybody here, most of it's either you're a parent or a grandparent, and your child is in, on the other side of the room in a high chair eating Cheerios or whatever, and somebody is threatening that child. Are you going to stop and say, excuse me, wait a minute, i got to turn the stove off, i got to take the pot off the stove and put it on the side, and then I'll go over and take care of my child. No, you run right straight over and take care of your child. Right, but you started a fire in the kitchen. <laughs> right, and if you stay too long, the fire gets out of control in the kitchen. But you still protect your child. Every cell in your body functions the same way. When it's challenged, it has a, the, a fight, flight, or freeze response. So if your cells are challenged, they do they want to eat? No. Do they want to produce um, T3 hormones? Do they want to produce insulin? No, they want to shut down and they want to protect themselves and they want to take care of themselves. And if that's happening to all of your cells, that upstream is going to start to affect tissues, organs, and systems, and the organism. So it's called the cell danger response. It's a very technical paper, several papers on it. Dr. Robert Navio wrote them. Very technical, but it's the concept just struck home to me because it's everything that's going on at our cellular level and our microbiome functions the same way. And if you have inflammation or you have issues, inflammation is going to lead to uh, illness and death. But if you stop the insult, that's the first thing and the only thing you really have to do to get well is to stop the insult. Because if I keep punching him in the head, and he goes to the doctor and he keeps saying, Doc, I got this headache, you know, and <laughs> I just keep punching him in the head. He's got, you know, um, some syndrome going on. And the doctor says, well, let me give you this drug to take care of this thing, right? No, just stop getting punched in the head. You know, that's just stop the insult. Now, drugs and supplements will come in handy to get you from that illness to wellness, and then your body can take over and start to heal itself. And that's what that's what that Brady does for you. Um, and when, now let's get into some bacteria things. When I see E. coli, what do you think? Jack in the box and getting sick, right? <laughs> right? But guess what? E. coli in your system help manage T3 hormones for your thyroid. They're also critically important. Without them, you probably wouldn't survive. When they say clostridium, what do you think of? Most people think of C. diff and really bad diarrhea. Okay? Right? Well, most clostridia are going to convert lactate to butyrate in your colon. And when I say strep, what do you think of? Strep throat. But streptococcus are the first bacteria that determines what your oral microbe is going to be when you're a baby. So these are important organisms. So if you look at the building on the left, you have this wonderful structure that's been built and is filled with all, all kinds of you know, healthy people, and one bad guy gets into a room. 
well, medicine blows up the building. Well, they got it, right? But the, all the collateral damage that went along with that. So you take an antibiotic, guess what? It's going to start to affect your microbiome. And if you affect your microbiome, it's going to affect your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health, everything. So we have to be careful to just go after the bad guys. And when I'm talking E. coli versus lactobacillus, for instance, is a probiotic, E. coli replicates in 17 minutes. Lactobacillus in 90 minutes. So in six hours from one of each, I'll have 250,000 E. coli and only 64 lactobacillus. So you have to take a lot of lactobacillus to outcompete the E. coli that is in, in your system. And that's why when you see a probiotic and you're seeing 30 billion, 50 billion, 100 billion CFU, that's why you have to take that many. And there's just some papers that, that go through what I was just talking about. All right, <clears throat> so the microbiome is very much like those plants in the field. You have these microvilli, and on those microvilli, you have bacteria. And the, the, the body feeds the bacteria. The back, and, and stores, I should ask me back that up. They store the energy for the bacteria because the bacteria in the soil and the bacteria in your gut do not store energy. They're dependent upon the host to provide them with some food or what, you know, by whatever you're eating. Fiber is indigestible by a human being, but it's the most important thing you eat. Why do you think that is? Feeds your bacteria. Feeds your, it feeds your microbiome, exactly. Um, and all of that breakdown is done by enzymes, and I'll get into them in just a little bit. But if you have, here, hold up for one second, please. If you have an enzyme and a substrate to break down, if this is the substrate, the enzyme has to match and fit in just like that. If there's a, a, a branch in here, the enzyme can't get in and it can't break it down. So you have to have a different set of enzymes to then break down that. If it's a little bit longer in there and it's like this, it doesn't work. So they have to be ex exact fits. So if, you're, if you get into the fact that fiber is so, so important, um, there may be as many as 11 million genes in your microbiome versus the 44,000 or so human genes that we have, right? That's, that's significant. So the amount, and these, these genes are, create proteins, all enzymes are proteins. So what you have is you have all your DNA is, or the DNA and the, micro, the microbes are making the enzymes to break down the food so they can feed themselves. If you like chocolate and I like vanilla and we put chocolate in the system, he's gonna do well, I'm not. So to have the best microbiome, you really want to have a, a mixed variety of fruits and vegetables because then you'll have a, a mixed variety of bacteria break down those fruits and vegetables, all right? The microbiome of your body doesn't change very much, but the microbiome in your gut can change significantly. But they are the ones that translocate a lot of the food that you eat into your, your system so that you get the nutrition from the food. The microbiome is, is that important. So when we talk fibers, there may be as many, let me say, there, there may be as many as 6,000 different enzymes you need to break down fiber. And the human body only makes uh, enzymes to break down sugars like resistant starch and lactose and sucrose and trelose. And trelose is a funny one. Trelose is a, is a sugar that's absolutely critical for a shrimp to flick out of danger or a grasshopper to jump. And they figured out how to make it from corn. So now it's cheap. So now they put this in all processed foods. If it's cold processed or heat processed, they use it to keep the, the structure and the, the texture right, right? But Dr. Britton at, at Baylor University found out that trelose is making C. diff more toxic. So they're putting all this, this, this sugar and they call it well, many different names. They put it in the food and if you have C. diff, it's gonna feed it and cause some problems. You're talking high fructose corn syrup? No, I'm that... talking trelose. Oh man. I'm not even talking high fructose corn syrup. We're just talking trios, which is just, uh, there you go. So, so we have to, we need, now when you're looking at, at different fibers, citrus pectin has the opposite effect on many microbes as apple pectin. Apple pectin will increase one group and decrease the other. Orange pectin does the exact opposite. So you can, you can sort of tweak your microbiome a little bit by eating more orange pectin or more apple pectin if you want, if you will, and you can do that with all your foods. So again, it becomes so important to eat a very big variety of fruits and vegetables. 
there we go. All right. I'm going to go here. So probiotics. Let's let's get into them. This the blue box. Most any probiotic, and, and they will all do all of those things. They, it does. You know, people who are healthy, their microbiome is working fine. They just want to take a probiotic. Anything is going to work pretty well, right? Uh, then when you get the, and so you have genus and species and strain when you're looking at bacteria on a label. So lactobacillus acidophilus, and then some like NCFM or LA14 or some other number. The strain designation is the acidophilus. Now, now you're getting more specific in what these bacteria can do. They can create vitamins for you. They can create different enzymes. They can help with, uh, you know, a little bit more immunology. But when you get into sick people, people who are coming to doctors because they have a problem with their gut, now we're into rare effects. And now you really have to know what the strain of the organism is for that effect or to not create a problem. When you take a probiotic, do you take it with food or without? Well, there's two schools of thought on that. Uh, one is that if you take it on an empty stomach, there's less stomach acid and the bacteria will get through the stomach. The other school is if you eat food, it's going to buffer your stomach and it's not going to be as acidic and you can get the bacteria through. So what we do is we have... 18 patents on how to get things through the stomach using sodium alginate. So for us, it doesn't matter when you take it. And I'll get into that in just a little bit. Around the world, there are these culture collections where bacteria are stored in liquid nitrogen, good guys and bad guys. The one in the upper right is the American type culture collection. That's where most of our bacteria have designations. But here, if you have that number, you can look at the genetics of the organism. You can find out exactly what it can do. If you don't, have that number, then you, you're not going to be able to get that information. And this is my pet peeve on probiotics. If you look at, at the, the top part here of how the papers are referenced, they're giving you a collection number of the organism. But on the bottom paragraph, it says Lactobacillus plantarum PB8. PB8 is a trademark. It has absolutely nothing to do with nomenclature. It's a trademark. It belongs to one company that trademark. I can buy that organism, but I can't call it PB8 because I don't own that trademark. NCFM is a trademark. GG is a trademark. All of these things are trademarked. They're not scientific references. These are two acidophilus. The one on the right has a glycocalyx, a fuzzy exterior. It gives you the, the ability to adhere to epithelial cells in your, in your gut. The one on, on the, on the left-hand side is smooth like a hot dog and goes through you just as fast. It does not have the ability to stick around. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for the image. <laughs> All right. So here's two different ones, two strains of acidophilus. The SD5212 and 5221 are, are strain designations. But you can see one is going to uh, um, inhibit salmonella, and the other one's going to inhibit E. coli. So neither one is particularly good at, at uh, listeria, no, and they're both very good at staph. But they're different in what they do. So again, having that greater diversity gives you the greater ability to fight different pathogens that are coming into the system. And now I'm going to get into some, some technical things here. And uh, if it's too much, just kind of raise your hand, let me know, and I'll slow down. You don't have. No, I'm, just, <laughs> no I'm, I'm going through this, and what's going through my head is what you're saying is a diverse microbiome equals a crazy strong immune system yes yet over the last three years we've been wiping the surface of everything we've been using hand sanitizer mm -hmm. like crazy people we've been killing these absolutely I and have. now our immune systems are well now we haven't i, I haven't but there's people that have been that's a, that's a killing their right. bacteria and weakening their immune system when they think they're Protect themselves from one thing. So I saw one of those flashing signs down at one of the stores and it said, I've used so much hand sanitizer when I pee, I clean the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this particular organism will degrade oxalates. How many of you have friends who have uh, oxalate stones? Right? So there's... Um, 
You don't count. There's there's a normal bacterium in your gut called oxalobacter, which breaks it down. But this is this is an organism that will break down oxalates. Um, it produces inflammatory cytokines. So if you are challenged with with with, a, with, a, with a, an issue of some sort, whether it's bacterial or viral, your body needs an inflammatory response. So this is going to help create organism or um, interfering gamma and tumor necrosis factor alpha, which are going to increase your inflammatory response. It also makes a, a mixture of L positive and D negative lactic acid. So if you look at your hands, they're mirror images of each other, right? So one is so if you have uh, lactic acid in a tube and you would shine a beam of light into it, one will rotate light to the left and the other one will rotate light to the right. So that's the mirror image part of it. Some people don't have the enzyme that breaks down the D negative side of lactic acid. So they get D negative lactic acidosis and what are the symptoms? Gas, bloating, brain fog, and fatigue. How many other diseases have those same symptoms that are GI issues? Right? And it could simply be because they can't break down that one. Now, this is not a lot of people. In, in the overall per, uh, population, it's a very small number. But the sicker the population is, the higher that number goes. And the more sugar you eat, the more D-negative lactic acid you're going to produce. So if you don't know that this organism is making D-negative lactic, it's not going to do any good for your patient with, say, short bowel disease or SIBO. It's not going to do them any good. It's going to, it has the potential to make them worse just because of that and then this will downregulate. Uh, it's not likely to increase is the, the, the proper fda terms um histamines and tyramines and tyramine is cheese headache you know people eat the cheese and they get a headache it's because of the, the tyramine issues and so those are some of the other things and the story on this particular organism and how it relates to our company is dr marvin speck isolated that organism from a two-year-old diaper in the early 1970s and they did a lot of studies. They fed it back to the child, and the child's health got better. So they started testing it with other people and other children, and they started getting better. And back in those days, if you wanted to do some scientific work, you had to take it to somebody else to verify what you did. So they sent it up to Purdue and the University of Wisconsin, and they got the same kind of results, and they needed to make it commercial. So where are you going to go to get it commercial? You're going to go to a cheesemaker. The Lactobacillus helveticus makes Swiss cheese. Right, so you eat the lactobacillus to make cheese. So they went to the the cheesemakers. The lead microbiologist there was Bob Sellers, and his protege was my partner. So he's been building factories and working with these organisms since the 1970s. And so our knowledge base on how to grow bugs—I call them bugs, bacteria, bacteria—how to grow them, how to treat them, how to you know, make them be more efficient—comes from all those years of doing that kind of work. Um, some of the patents that he has. And there's another organism, uh, Lactobacillus uh, bifidobacterium, rather, animalis subspecies, Lactus BIL7, again, degrades oxalates, but it only makes L positive. Right? Um, it's going to improve the immune response uh, after a vaccination. And if you put those two organisms together, you have a significantly different result on runny nose, cough, and fever in healthy children. So you go from 48 to 72 percent, and on the runny nose, it goes from nine to almost 60 percent improvement in the runny nose just by adding those two organisms. So you can do a lot with um, combinations and different bacteria. This and how specific they are. This is a bacillus coagulans. If um, uh, it's 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 response to an adenovirus is a 250 percent increase in TNF alpha. There's a 1,700% increase in TNF-alpha with influenza A, but no response from any other form of influenza. So this guy's only going to help you with those two things. And it's not going to do anything for any of the other influences that you can pick up. So they're very specific. Then again, you need a, a balanced, very diverse microbiome to have the effects, all the different effects that you can get from, from these organisms. And here's one of my favorites, Bacillus subtilis. Again, when, when babies are born, they get um, lactobacillus at birth, they get bifidobacteria from breastfeeding, then they crawl around on the ground and eat dirt. Right? My mother used to say, if you didn't eat a peck of dirt by the time you were three, you're not a normal boy. Right? So we ate dirt. And what did we get in the dirt? We got bacillus subtilis. That's what we got in the dirt. Right? And so we, we build up an immune system based upon all of these factors. And it usually takes about three years for a child's immune system to get fully ramped up and, and, and efficient. 
Um, but here you have two, two different strains of bacillus subtilis. One will increase TNF alpha, the other will decrease it. One will increase tumor necrosis factor alpha, the other one will decrease it. If you have an inflamed patient, which one do you give them? If you don't know which strain it is, you don't know which organism here to give to them, right? So you would, you know, the, the, the papers that are going to show that the uh, the B10 strain is going to increase TNF alpha and and uh, and they're looking one beta and interferon gap. The uh, P P8 six strain is going to lower. So again, if you don't have the name, you don't know what you're doing to your patients. So you need to have this kind of information. This one uh, again, I show this one mainly for that one line that shows that this organism organism can be re found in the GI tract eight weeks after use. So they do stick around, folks. They don't just pass through you. And BLO4 is one of the biggest ones that we use in all of our things. And this is the one that we use in our true bifido product. This is going to have almost all um, interleukin-10, all anti-inflammatory cytokines from this one. Um, right now, when I first started reading papers coming out of China in February of 2020, you know, you get that, that virus, you get it in through your nose, your mouth, some years through your ears, and you swallow it, it goes through your GI tract, and it affects your colon. And in Chinese medicine, your colon is attached to your lungs, small intestine to your heart, colon to your lungs. So this started to have an impact on your colon. And in fact, in China, they were finding they could have much better testing results to see if you had this organism by testing a fecal smear rather than a nasal swab. And then it ended up going into your lungs. And now with people with long COVID, they're finding very depressed bifidobacteria levels. So the effect of bifidobacteria on your health in these days is really you know, quite significant. Uh, and that's a, just a paper that shows taking the strains that we use. You're not going to disrupt your microbiome taking augment and Theralac. Now, these are the things to look at when you go in to buy a probiotic in the store. If you go into a store to get one, if it's in a plastic bottle, that's the first one to discard. These organisms are freeze dried. They're grown in the fermenter, they're washed, they're dropped into liquid nitrogen, they're put into a vacuum and all the water is sucked out of them. The one thing they don't want is water. And water can move through a plastic bottle. There's over 3000 pounds per square inch of pressure. If the inside of the bottle is cold and the outside is humid, there's that kind of pressure. So water can get into that bottle. Glass bottles, that doesn't happen. So a plastic bottle is one. Next thing is if you look at, uh, it says a, pro, a proprietary blend of all these very good organisms. Um, well, how much of each one is there in there? And the reason you wanna know that is because if there's a paper that says you need 3 billion CFU of BIO7 to do, have this effect, you need to take 3 billion CFU of that organism to get that effect. And if it's in a proprietary blend, you don't know how much you're getting of that one. And I can pretty much assure you from the way commerce works, they're going to put the most of the least expensive and the least of the most expensive in that blend. But it's in there, right? So you want to do that. We pay attention to organisms that play well in the sandbox together. And there are some organisms that are just totally incompatible. Um, and, and they just you know, don't get along. You can take them both, but if you take them at different times, they get to their spots and they do their job. Uh, this one has milk in it. Uh, it's guaranteed um, at time of manufacture. And that just means that I promised you that there's uh, 50 billion CFU in here today, the day I put it in the bottle. Tomorrow it could be dead, but I met my guarantee. We guarantee for two full years that you're going to get what's each, each one of those organisms at that count after two years. And we just, just finished doing some studies after 54 months we're still 20% over our guarantee after 54 months. So that's longer than the, the, the 24 months that we have just on our guarantee. Um, and I will get into a little bit about bacteria and stomach acid. And I don't want to get far away from stomach acid because that's so important. Gannon put this, this paper out to the doctors and said we only lose two to three logarithms going through the stomach. So if you had $1,000 and you took away three logarithms, how much do you have left? $1. You lost 99.9%. .9%. So they're, they're, they're banking on the fact that the doctors wouldn't remember 
their logarithms. Two to three doesn't sound like much, but 99% sounds like a lot. So stomach acid is a barrier to entry. If you didn't have good stomach acid, all the bacteria you're breathing right now, get mixing with your saliva, you're swallowing them, and they're getting into your stomach acid, and your stomach acid is killing them. If you didn't have stomach acid that was both three or lower, these bacteria would get through your system, into your colon, and start to grow, because it's a beautiful environment for growing bacteria. So here's what companies do to get things through the stomach. On one side, I got this from the, the DR, um, they're called delayed release capsules. But you can see in that middle slide, they start to open the stomach. And then, and then once it comes out of the stomach, the, it opens fully, but now you still have to deal with bile salts and you still have to deal with pancreatic you know, juices that are coming out because they're very harmful to bacteria. What we have is sodium alginate. And this particular picture, we put in some grape skin extract so you could see some color to showing what's happening. Sodium alginate has this very unique property. At normal pH, it's sodium alginate. When the pH gets down to around 3.54, it's converted to alginic acid, purely a function of pH. So as, the, as that capsule starts to dissolve and the stomach acid starts to come in contact with the sodium alginate, it, it forms alginic acid and it creates a shell. And it protects the bacteria while they're in that shell, they're buffered to a pH greater than four, and they'll get through the stomach, and then they'll come out of the stomach, the pH goes up, it goes back to sodium alginate. But now they stay in their own little polysaccharide gel, and so you get deep delivery. Because all of your most of your microbial activity is in the last third of your small intestine and the first third of your colon. So you need to get the bacteria down there. If they open up too quickly, they're feeding, they're competing for food and space with the indigenous bacteria. So we get deep delivery. And then in uh, growing these bacteria um, in a fermenter, we knew that you had to have polysorbate 80 for them to grow. They won't grow without it. But none of you or we want to put polysorbate 80 into our products. So we went into our lab and we found out if you take sunflower lecithin and oleic acid, it wakes the bacteria up. It reconstitutes the cell membrane and they can intake nutrients and output metabolites. And we can add it to anybody else's probiotic. And you can see that the uh, red line on the bottom is without the alginate, the blue line is with. Now, this goes out to 12 hours. To be fair, that red line can catch up around 30 or 36 hours, but if you have diarrhea, it's already gone. They hadn't even had a chance to wake up and do anything. So adding sodium alginate to anybody's probiotic is going to make it more effective. So we shorten what I call the lag phase. And the time you take it till it's effective, you shorten that up to the back. So that's, those are the two things that we do on how we protect our bacteria and how we wake them up. And so very generally, we have four, four major probiotics. Uh, we have, uh, in these, these are the professional uh, versions, pretty much, and we have them also as retail versions, but Theralac has lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. That's the one that you take when people have uh, a recent challenge for taking an antibiotic. That's the best one to take. A lot of the Lyme drugs that we deal with are giving Theralac, and their patients don't get C. diff and they don't get candida. Um, because they give them Theralac along with their antibiotics. And they're giving antibiotic cocktails. So they're taking four or five or six of them, they're doing the IV, they're taking it orally. They, these people are pilled to death to, to get rid of the Lyme disease that they got. True bifido is only bifidobacteria. and only works in your colon. That's going to be really good for people who've been ill for a longer period of time. Because it's only going to produce anti-inflammatory cytokines. So when your body is challenged, it creates these inflammatory cytokines to fight the disease, and then you need to be brought back down to normal. Well, some people don't, so they get stuck up there in, in that in chronic inflamed space. And some probiotics can help you know, calm that down by the, the cytokines that they make. Truflora is um, a different kind of bacteria. There are some that compete with trubifidal, so there are none in there, but we added some enzymes, because we do a lot with children uh, on the spectrum. And a lot of them only eat cooked food. And well, that destroys enzymes, number one. And so that they can't break down the, the enzymes or the, the fiber that they're getting in their, in their normal diet because they've destroyed the enzymes. So we put some enzymes in there. And those enzymes have a significant impact on the growth of um, yeast, problematic yeast. And biomzyme is simply a uh, probiotic with a lot of different strains in there um, to give you a, a much greater mix of bacteria. And we put this chart out for 
for doctors. Um, it gives you the physical characteristics of each organism. So that when you go to your doctor and he's gonna put, tell you to take this organism, he's gonna look at this and say, okay, um, this is gonna lower, you know, not likely to increase histamines, it's gonna help you with oxalates, it's gonna do this and that, uh, and it's not gonna bruise any inflammatory cytokines, so you can take this one. You know, so they, they have this, we give them this kind of a chart so they can be a little more specific with their, you know, their ill patients. Although we don't diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this just gets into, you know, some of the specific things on, on Theralac Pro, um, you know, how it has four strains of lactobacillus and two strains of bifidobacteria. Oh, and the other thing that we've done since the day we started, we have published third-party lab tests online by lot number for strength, purity, and activity of every probiotic we've made. So if you have a lot number, you can go online and you can find out exactly how many it is. We're guaranteeing 30 billion, it might test at 50, 55. We're guaranteeing a 50 billion with one, it might test at 100, it might test at 70. You know, we can't be very specific on that because we're buying the bacteria in. But we published that online by lot number and nobody else to this day does that. And we've done it for 22 years now. The True Bifido Pro, again, this is gonna be more about down-regulating histamines and. Um, <clears throat> producing anti-inflammatory cytokines, and this is going to be the beta-glucanase and hemicellulase go after the, the glucans, the beta-glucans in, in problematic yeast. So you produce a lot of lactic acid, which an environment it doesn't like. You start going after the little tentacles that come off the yeast, because normally it's just like a football, and when it gives the opportunity to go crazy, it starts to send out little tentacles. And so this starts to break those hyphae down. Um, and so that's how it can help with um, people have problematic yeast issues. Which one of those was for the oxalates? Well, both Ferrolac Pro and Trubifido Pro have organisms that will break down oxalates. Oh, okay. But only Bifidobacterium animalis subspecies lactis organisms will break down oxalates. B. bifidum, B. infantis, they won't. Okay. Uh, this is just a little chart, and there's, there, there's some samples of this over here on the table how Theralac will help balance the immune system. So you have up in the upper left-hand corner, you have a, a, a T cell, um, and it doesn't know what it wants to be when it grows up. Right? So I'm then a, I'm a T cell. you're a T cell, right? I don't know what I want to be either. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I have to wait to grow up first, I guess. <laughs> uh, so you have a dendritic cell, and that will, that will then determine which way it goes, whether it goes to your, your cellular immunity or your uh, humoral which is going to be macrophages or, or white blood cells. Um, and you can see how they, they work to keep that, that thing balanced. Everything you want from Mother Nature is in balance. And again, compatibility of organisms is important. You can see the NCFM and bifidobacteria, they, they play well in the sandbox. Uh, Estermophilus doesn't play well with anybody. Um, a little more of that. And here's the glass bottle. Now, here's a, here's a, a fun thing. There's a, a fiber, and everybody's going to get a sample of this fiber here tonight. It's called true fiber. It's um, sun fiber, rather. And the sun fiber is partially hydrolyzed guar gum. It comes from a company called Tayo in Japan. And they talk about how well it increases your bifidobacteria count by taking it regularly. So we went into our lab and we said, hmm, if we take the sugar out of MRS broth and we put that in, we should see growth. But we didn't. So those bifidobacteria could not utilize the, the fiber some other organism had to break it down first and to a point that they could use it. And they said butyrate levels go up. Well, bifidobacteria don't make butyrate. They make lactate. And lactate is converted to butyrate by Clostridia and others, but only at the proper pH. Again, pH is such an important thing that most of us even forget about. But anyway, once you get butyrate, then all of a sudden you have a, story, a healthy colonocytes and your colon gets healthier and your, and your immune system goes up, acromancia levels go up, a lot of other things. And here's a little chart showing where the pHs are in your body. And when I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit here about the stomach. Um, pH in your stomach needs to be in 1.5 to 3.0 pH. The lower the number, the stronger the acid. When it gets to seven and goes the other way, it becomes basic, and it's acidic down below seven. So one, five to three. Many people who get, um, some GERD or some reflux or some sour burps, they'll get put on Rolaids or Tums or, or other things. What that does is it raises the pH of your stomach of about four. Well, now when you eat protein, 
your protein doesn't break down. Because pepsin only works in a range that Mother Nature created, 1.5 to 3. So it starts to break down protein. Then that comes out of your stomach and trips and chymotrips and break it down a little bit more. And it gets down, broken down further and further to the point where your body can start to utilize that protein. But if you don't have the proper pH in your stomach, undigested proteins make it into your colon. And does this sound good? Putrefactive anaerobic bacteria start to grow. <laughs> does that sound like a good thing? No. And that's when people start getting all kinds of toxins produced. They'll start getting rashes on their skin because there's only two ways out of your system, right? Through your skin and into the toilet. So pH is really, really important in, in your stomach and in digesting food. But that same stomach acid reduces the effectiveness of lipase, for instance, or uh, amylase and a few other enzymes that reduces the effectiveness of those enzymes that you can take. So, uh, and, and enzoase, one of our products, we put the sodium algae in there to protect the enzymes going through the stomach. Um, and this is a little paper that shows that if you, the pre pH isn't proper, the lactate is not converted at all, or it's con converted to propionate, or it's converted to butyrate. Propionate is not the short chain fatty acid that you want a lot in children on the spectrum. Anyway, um, I think we're about we're, we're bumping up we're on bumping time, up so. on the time. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to stop right here. Uh, except that let me find so, one slide that I want to talk about very. Important. Let's find one slide. That's right. but let, let's break it down into three takeaways. Right. I, I'll contribute. Go ahead. No, finish your slide. All right. Well, this slide right here. So it's it's not what you eat; it's what you digest. And that's not 100 percent true because if you're eating McDonald's French fries, Coca Cola, or Pepsi, or any carbonated sugary drink or diet sugary drink, you, you're not going to get well. But if you eat good food, it's not what you eat, but it's what you digest. And when does digestion start? With your nose and your eyes. You see food, you smell food, you start to salivate, right? And then you have to chew your food so that it gets mixed with all those enzymes, right? So then it's it's not what you eat, but what you digest and assimilate and eliminate. So it doesn't matter if you if you if you eat the good food and you break it down, but if your GI tract, the terrain is in poor shape, then it doesn't absorb that nutrition and it just again goes out in the toilet. But the missing piece that I put on here is that. So many people have GI issues and, and what they call it is leaky gut, which means that proteins are getting out of your, your small intestine and your colon and getting into the bloodstream. And they're causing inflammation. They're causing all kinds of issues. If you take a systemic enzyme, which is one you take away from food, they will get into your bloodstream and start to break those proteins down. So my takeaways, number one is eat and chew good food. The older you get, the more likely you are going to need to be to take the digestive enzyme. Because as we get older, our production goes down. And then you have to keep the terrain in, in good shape. So you can do that with uh, you know, good food chewing. You can take a digestive enzyme when you need it. And you can take fiber, in either, either supplemental fiber like we have here, or um, good fruits and vegetables to manage the terrain and keep your probiotics good. And, you, you know, your, your, your microbiome can change on a flight from LA to Taipei. So you have a lot of ability to change it. So my takeaways. Perfect. What are yours? Variety. That's the spice of life. It, it is the spice of life. Yeah. It's just I'm thinking about going through all those different strains, which I've already forgotten what they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> but going through all those different strains and how they all interact with each other the only way to feed those different strains is just through a variety of food, which is the rainbow, not Skittles. Right. Exactly. Sugar. So a variety. Eat whole foods. Yes. Okay. And then to quote our friend Roland, your stomach doesn't have teeth. Right. So, okay, let's check to see if there was any questions that came in over Facebook. Well, anybody that one right there? My digestive system watching me eat a third plate of nachos, and I know who ate nachos today. <laughs> it was not me, just for the record. Uh, uh, 
Okay. Well, we didn't have any slides there. So I'm going to turn off the live broadcast and then we will take questions from there. Thank you, everyone.